Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Here we are going to discuss about these three topics. These are the delta formation, anticline and syncline and the block mountains. Let's begin with delta. Delta or the river delta is a landform created by deposition of sediments that are carried by the river at its mouth. We know that when river flows through the different stages, it undergoes a lot of activities. In the first stage, active vertical erosion takes place. In the second stage, valley widening again sideways erosion takes place and in all these stages, it takes a lot of sediments downstream. Finally, the sediments are deposited in the third stage and whatever is remaining, these are carried to the mouth. And the last place where river can deposit sediments on the surface is the mouth of the river. So, this river starts depositing the sediments at its mouth. Over a long period of uh, time, due to continuous deposition of sediments, there will be accumulation of these sediments at the mouth of the river. Right, one by one, it will get accumulated with the help of hundreds of years. These accumulated sediments will become new landforms. They will become new islands like this. Such islands which are formed due to deposition of sediments are only called as deltas. As the time increases, we can see changes in their numbers, size and shape. These sediments deposited by the rivers will create a new type of landform at its mouth. These kind of depositional landforms are called as deltas. Here in this picture you can see when deltas are created, the actual river, the single main river has started splitting into a number of multiple rivers. This also happens at the mouth of the river, right? Deltas are created by deposition of sediments and due to the formation of delta, the river starts splits into number of rivers. So here we can see uh, deltas, the main river is coming, it has deposited sediments at the mouth, therefore delta, deltas got created and the river got broken into a number of multiple smaller streams. See so these landforms which are created are called as deltas and the splitting in the rivers has resulted in making of a number of different streams, they are called as distributaries. So distributaries are also seen in the third stage of the river along with delta. And the area which are on either side of the river are, are the area which are formed by the same process of deposition of sediments. Such areas are called as floodplains. So here there is a picture. We have a river coming from the like top left side of the map, I mean photo. And after reaching the mouth, it has deposited a lot of sediments and created a very large delta. You, you can also see the uh, splitting of river into multiple distributaries also. So this is the delta formation and <clears throat> this is how deltas are created now what what we have to learn is this thing this is the diagram given in the textbook the main stream is coming deposition ha is happening on either side of the river then delta is formed at the mouth of the river and that has resulted in the splitting of river into different distributaries there is one uh, thing that we have to take care there is a small typing error it is not floor plane it is actually flood plane so this is what we have to study we have to learn to draw the diagram uh, properly and we should also know to mark the different parts of a deltaic region. Anticline and syncline are related to rocks and the formations or deformations happening on rocks. Earth's crust is made up of rocks and the earth crust is not a single body instead it is divided into number of multiple blocks called as tectonic plates and these tectonic plates are in continuous motion due to some internal forces which we will be studying in detail in the higher classes. So what happens here is due to these internal forces, the tectonic plates are in constant motion. So here is a map which is showing the major tectonic plates on earth, right? the North American plate and their region including the land as well as the parts of Atlantic Ocean, similarly Eurasian plate, African plate, Australian plate, we have the entire area of the earth's surface divided into multiple planes. These plates are in continuous motion from one place to another place, but it's a very slow motion. It takes maybe hundreds of years to move one or two meters so we have to keep that in mind whatever it is this motion can create a lot of deformations on the earth's surface there's a huge pressure when two plates comes close to each other there are different types of movement sometimes plates will come close to each other that is a convergent type of movement sometimes they may move away from each other then there is slight passing each other whatever it is it creates a lot of pressure on the rock and that can create deformations deformation is nothing but it is the change of shape of rocks so tectonic plates are in constant motion. When they get stressed, the shape of the rock changes. Stress means the amount of force applied on a part of body. There are different kind of stresses. Uh, these stresses can change the shape of the rock. That is what is called as deformation. The stress 
or a force that squeezes or compresses the rocks together is called as compression. So this is one type of stress that is very commonly seen uh, due to the movement of plates. And the other one is called as the tensional force or the tension, the stress that causes stretching of the rocks. When a rock is pulled from both sides, that is what is called as the stretching of the rock and the force behind that is called as tensional force or tension. So both these forces can change the shape of the rock. Here we have an example. This is a part of our crust, imagine, and it has multiple layers of the rocks. When there is force or the stress pushing it from both sides, that is what is called as compression. When there is a force pushing this or pulling this from both sides, then that is what is called as tension or the tensional force. Here we have an example when there is a force from both sides that will skew the rock or compress the rock and the shape of the rock will change. This is what is called as deformation. So when rocks bends due to compressional force, it gets deformed. And this process, you can see here, the straight rock, which was in a straight horizontal manner, has now got changed into folds or waves. This process is called as folding and we can see different folds are formed. Each of these bends, upward and downward bends, are called as folds. So due to compressional force or compressional stress, rocks get deformed and that changes into different folds. And there are two common type of folds, upward fold and downward fold. The upward folds are called as anticlines and the downward folds are called as synclines. Anticlines and synclines are the two most, most common type of folds. There are so many different types of folds. It depends on the degree of the force, time of force, based on so many other characteristics there are different types of force, sorry, folds. Now we are discussing only about anticlines and synclines. Folds can be very small, like in few centimeters, to very large like mountains. Tallest mountains in the world like Himalayan mountain and other tall mountains, tall mountains like Rocky Mountains, Alps, all these are actually formed due to the same process called folding. So therefore they are called as fold mountains. So this upward folds are anticlines and the downward folds are synclines. So we can say Himalaya is actually a huge fold. It's not a single fold. It's made up of multiple folds. Whatever it is, each of these folds are called as anticlines. So when we take a photo of anticline and syncline, this is how it looks like. The topmost part of uh, an anticline is called as crust and the lowermost part of a syncline is called as trough. So upward folds like arches are anticlines and the downward folds are synclines. This is what we have to learn uh, from this part of the uh, text. So here we have few photos. You can see uh, the anticlines as well as synclines. Here is another one, uh, mainly anticlines. Here is another one, it's a huge mountain and it is completely folded upward. Here, due to compression, its shape again got changed. Here is another one, uh, you can clearly see the anticlines and the syncline in the middle. And uh, what should we learn from this lesson? That is what is this one. We should learn to draw the diagram which is showing the formation of anticline and syncline. So you can show this using three different steps. First, in a picture, you show the horizontal uh, layers of the rock. and draw two arrows from both sides to show the compressional force. In the second image, you show a minute bending of the rock. Slow, slowly, the anticline and synclines is getting formed. And in the third picture, you can show both anticlines and synclines. Uh, you can use colors or else you can use different shades, whatever it is. Make sure same layer means all the layers on the top have same kind of design and all, this, all the second layers have same kind of design. That is what you have just take care of this. And you can mention the title which I have given here, rock strata before folding, folding of the rock strata and finally anticline and syncline formation. So this is what we have to learn. Now moving on to the next one, we have the block mountains. We have just heard about fold mountains. Fold mountains are formed due to folding of rock. Now we have another category of mountains, they are called as block mountains, otherwise fold to block mountains. Let's see what it is. Due to compression or tension, tension I told you. When a part of rock is pulled from either side, that is what is called as tension or tension of rocks. So due to compression or due to tension, earth's crust sometimes create cracks. These are called as fault lines. And the crust gets broken into different blocks if the stress continues or increases. And third thing what happens is, along these fault lines, displacement will take place. 
that is the blocks of the rock may go upward or downward or like horizontally they can move when they moves along the fault lines that is what is called as a fault so here also due to a force sometimes due to tension or sometimes due to compression the horizontal layer of the rock changes itself so its shape changes a kind of deformation happens and this will also lead to formation of certain kind of mountains that is what is coming under block mountains so this whole process is called as faulting right formation of cracks and the movement of blocks of earth's crust along the cracks is called as faulting so let's take a layer of rock imagine it is getting pulled from either side that is tension so when there is tensional force stretching will take place as well as cracking will take place these are called as fault line when it increases further imagine further uh, like tension is uh, applied to this particular part of the rock so what happens is both e like the uh, leftmost and rightmost pieces will move away from each other and the middle one will drop downwards so here we can see now in the middle we have a low lying area and on the left and right we have a high land so the higher lands will become mountains and the lower land will become valley so it is not happening overnight it takes again hundreds of years right initially uh, uh, like a valley will create it very slowly it will get created then rivers may start flowing it not necessarily whatever uh, on the left and right we can see mountains are formed so mountains which, which are formed like this are called as block mountains and the valleys which are formed in this way are called as rift valleys right so here we have another example we have a piece of rock or piece of crust and you can see the crack formation then it is getting pulled from each side so that leads to formation of rift valleys as well as block mountains block mountains are also called as host and rift valleys are called as graben so these kind of mountains which are formed due to faulting and the certain movements are called as block mountains here is a photo that is uh, showing a block mountain and a rift valley in the middle i hope you you might have figured it all out already on left and right what we have is the block mountain and the middle region is the region that got moved downwards so let me show you this this was the initial uh, stage of the strata here or the rock here now what happened due to tension is that the middle layer gone down so in the middle now we have a valley you i hope you remember the name it is called as rift valley and on either side uh, we have the block mountain so this is how block mountains are formed this is one way one more way is there sometimes from both side means one particular block will be standing there from either side the blocks of the crust can go down so again in the middle there will be a single large mountain so that is what is shown here here you can see there are hosts and graben so in the middle we have a mountain and the both side has gone down so those two are graben or the rift valleys few examples are there the Vosges mountains in France and the Black Forest in Germany and the Vindhya mountains in India these are a few examples of block mountains so here we have a picture which shows block mountains in different parts of the world in all the pictures you can see there is a valley in the middle and on either side there are block mountains and what you have learned ultimately from the test book is to draw a diagram that is showing the formation of block mountains and rift valleys initially you draw a piece of crust with the different layers of the rock then show the fault line formations on that then in the next picture you have you can show the upward and downward downward movements of the blocks here also you can uh, give different colors or different shades for same layers so that in the second picture it will be clearly visible that what has happened to the rock so here you can see two blocks are standing there and other two blocks have gone down so this is how block mountains are formed examples we have already discussed there are two types of block mountains one is a lifted block mountain and the other one is sloped block mountain thank you